Hi. 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 Mailbag power! Hey Zelda Universe! Did I already say that? Anyways, if you've been watching ZUTV for a while, you've probably gotten a lot of Cody and you're probably wondering who I am and why I'm so hyper. The answer to that question is I'm Cody's boss. I'm the guy who owns and operates Zelda Universe day in, day out, uh, and that's why you don't see me on YouTube that much, but this is war and it's serious. Since he's gonna make fun of me, I'm gonna throw things that make fun of him back at him and his face, which is also stupid. Way stupider than my beard, which is, which is awesome. Oh, look at me. I'm Cody Davies, and you're watching the Zelda Universe YouTube channel. I'm supposed to be Australian, but I'm not, because I don't even talk in an Australian accent. I talk like some weird Cody creature, and I can't say YouTube. I'm even trying right now. YouTube. I can't say it. My hair is, is really, really weird and done, and I wear headphones around my neck because I'm trying to look cool because I need your affection and love, YouTube people. YouTube. 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 Now that I've made my point very clear to you, I'm going to continue on with the mailbag. YouTube. First question. DragonChi26 asks, What, if anything, are you concerned about in terms of Skyward Sword's gameplay mechanics? On the other side of the coin, what do you think will be received really well in the same regard? What aspects of the game are you most excited about? And is there anything in particular you're hoping they will have in the game that they haven't showcased? There's a lot that I am really excited about for Skyward Sword, and there's probably just a couple things that I'm a little nervous about. First and foremost is that stamina bar type thing that we've been seeing. It seems like when Link is running or swinging from a vine or climbing up a wall of vines, there's this little circle that looks like a green flower, and it slowly goes away. This means that you're essentially on a time limit for climbing vines. However, those sword beams look really cool. I mean, come on! Like, hold up your sword, like... That, that looked really dumb, but, like... I'm gonna be, like, swinging sword beams all over everything. It's, it's gonna be... it's gonna be freaking awesome, sword beams. I'm probably gonna use that to, like, finish off all the enemies. It's gonna be really cool. So, what am I hoping that they will innovate in? Actually, only kind of one area I'm curious about. The transportation between Skyloft and Hyrule. They haven't said how he's going to get from place to place, and we know that he gets to Hyrule by jumping off a cliff. This really poignant, powerful moment in, uh, in Skyward Sword, where he jumps off this cliff to travel down through the clouds to Hyrule for the first time but they never said how he gets back and forth between them. And I'm hoping that it's something a little more innovative than a teleporter. Midna was the teleporter in Twilight Princess, and that kind of worked because, like, Midna would turn you into a bunch of Twilight pixels and shoot you up and down through this portal. But I don't think a generic teleporter system is going to be quite as cool the millionth time around. I really think that they need to figure out something, something way more interesting. Something that maybe has to do with the plot, not a canon. Question number two is from two people, and I'm gonna stick them together in one because they're kind of the same question. Man in Green asks, first, do you think Ganondorf will ever really die for good or will he keep coming back? And Josiah Inc. asks, do you think Ganon slash Ganondorf will be in Skyward Sword? So let's answer Man in Green questions first. Will Ganon ever really die for good? Probably not. Why won't he die for good? Because Nintendo keeps him as one of the main intellectual properties of Zelda. He's so ingrained in Zelda that he can never go away. He's got video game tenure. Do you think Ganon will be in Skyward Sword? Unfortunately, yes, I do. Because Nintendo kinda maybe sorta hinted at it when some reporter asked them, you know, hey, will Ganon be in Skyward Sword? And they just did the, you know, no, no comment. That usually is code for yes. I'm a little disappointed that Ganon might be in Skyward Sword because I, I loved when, you know, the Minish Cap Four Swords uh, and that kind of stuff, they, they added a new villain, they added Vadi. And the cool thing about Vadi was that, you know, unlike, you know, Majora's Mask, where there was just one new villain for one game, Vadi actually spanned over a couple series. And it was, it was really cool to watch his story evolve, but it ended. It had a definite ending. Ganon has no definite ending, and he's, he's kind of like comic relief villain at this point. He's so overused that 
Nintendo really can't use him anymore because he's not scary. If you if you have enough vampires running around, vampires are blood-sucking, monstrous, undead creatures that kill you. But they're so overused that we have Twilight, and that is what's happening. Ganondorf is going to become Twilight, and it's going to be horrible. Next question! Turtle777 asks, has Nintendo ever considered opening up a Zelda game for expansion slash add-ons delivered over the internet? I realize this sort of expansion wouldn't work terribly well with the traditional story arcs, but there have always been side quests that have nothing to do with the main plot. Excellent question, Turtle777. You'd be surprised to hear that Nintendo has actually done this before with a game called BS Zelda. Uh, BS did not stand for what you probably think it stands for, it stood for Broadcast Satellite, which was a really old add-on to the Nintendo Entertainment System that was launched only in Japan and would deliver content over the internet via satellite. Uh, actually, you know what, there's a really, really great, kind of long, but really, really great YouTube video all about it. Check it out right here. It's, it's actually really worth the entire half hour that it, it's all about this game called BS Zelda, which was really like four games in one, all delivered over the internet through the satellite delivery system. What was cool was that you could only play the game during certain times of the day, and during each time of the day there would be something different about the game. It was the regular Legend of Zelda as well as a couple uh, other Zelda things that made up smaller games. The point being is that Nintendo has experimented with this in the past, and they might be willing to do it again in the future. However, and there's always a however, quite frankly, Nintendo's online gaming sucks. They're trying to fix it with a 3DS, which only needs one friend code for all games, but there's something kind of really flawed in there, and that's the word friend code. We don't really want friend codes, do we? Shake your head no, because you don't want friend codes. We want usernames, we want things... Un until Nintendo invents a system that's kind of more like Steam or Xbox Live, or even PlayStation Network, we have no chance of seeing anything worth doing online with Zelda, no downloadable content probably because they don't really have a downloadable content delivery system. In conclusion, probably not, but check out BS Zelda because it's a really interesting take on what you're thinking about. Questione numero tres. Yuri-chan asks, Hi Cody, I just got Ocarina of Time for WiiWare two weeks ago, and I realized that Ocarina of Time is a lot like Twilight Princess. Do you think Nintendo did that on purpose or by accident? My name's Jason. Who, who is this? Who's this Cody guy? Why, why do people keep calling me Cody? You must have, you almost have me confused with some really lame non-bearded fellow across the world who's totally less important than me. Anyways, to actually answer your question, Ocarina of Time is a lot like Twilight Princess, and that's not an accident. In fact, pretty much everything the Zelda team does ever is on purpose. Uh, it's games in general, things are done on purpose because they want to convey a certain message or theme. Uh, it's kind of a lot like writing a book or doing a painting or doing all of those things at once. It's like film and, and art and, and media and, and music and books and everything all thrown into one crazy package. They have to plan these out a lot. And yeah, Twilight Princess was intended to be what's called a spiritual successor to Ocarina of Time. So kind of like what Mario 64 is to Super Mario Galaxy, Ocarina of Time is to Twilight Princess. To, to keep rolling with that, Super Mario Sunshine came out after Super Mario 64 but was kind of, you think of it as in the middle of Super Mario, like a transition period between Mario 64 and Galaxy. The same thing with The Wind Waker. Sunshine is equal to The Wind Waker in this in this. Thing. The Wind Waker and Sunshine were both really, really great games, but were kind of underrated for, for what they were, and they featured a very different style and motive than their predecessors. Twilight Princess and, and Super Mario Galaxy as well uh, were, were these spiritual successors, or true sequels to these classics that were held in such high regard. Nintendo purposefully wanted to make a game that invoked feelings of Ocarina of Time when you played it, which is why for you, when you do the reverse, because you're now playing Ocarina of Time after Twilight Princess, uh, they did such a good job at mimicking the graphical style and the overall feel of Ocarina of Time in Twilight Princess as a next generation game that you're actually reminded of Twilight Princess playing Ocarina of Time. How cool is that? Pretty cool. 
This next question short, but a little bit important. Anna asks, do you think that Nintendo will ever give out the gender for the Skyward Sword before the game is released? The answer to that has actually already been given by Nintendo. Sometime back during E3 or during one of their random press conferences that they had about things, they said that the Skyward Sword is genderless and that it's only taking the form of a female figure because the designers wanted it that way. They haven't really given the answer to that yet. There probably is a reason why it's taking the form of a young girl. <laughs> for a second, for a second, I almost just thought that all of Link's helpful partners in the past have been girls, but then I remember that King of Red Lions was not a girl. He was a fat man. Last question time! Caradam asks, who would win in a fight to the death? Me or Cody? I'll let you find out the answer to that in our next big YouTube series, Cody vs. Jason, Fight to the Finish, available on PaperTube coming this summer. Whoa! Are we out of time already? I feel like I was just getting to know you people. Well then, it looks like you're just gonna have to send me more questions to answer next week. So hit up the link in the description and feed me questions. I'll be back next week with another mailbag. Until then, peace out! Do 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 do